Do you believe Jesus was God? I do. All right, let's see it. So all-knowing and all-powerful? Well, things like walking on the stormy sea and then telling it to hush up afterwards. I'd say that points to him having God's power and authority. Except having God's power and authority does not necessarily mean someone is God. Uh, the Judaism just before, during, and after this period identified a few different figures who exercised what were supposed to be exclusively divine prerogatives, who sat in God's throne, who were worshipped by everyone on earth, and who were even referred to by the very name of God, and yet were not God themselves. Okay, fine, but he can't be all-knowing. How come? Two examples. Matthew 24, 26, when the disciples asked Jesus what will be the signs of his return, he says, about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Okay, and the second? Mark eleven thirteen. Jesus curses a fig tree because he didn't know figs weren't in season. The second one is a silly argument. I don't care about it, so I'm skipping over it. Got it. All right, let's start with Matthew 24. The context of this passage is we have Jesus literally telling his disciples detail upon detail of every event that will take place before his coming. But then amazingly, after listing all these future events, he somehow doesn't know the day or hour of his own return? Exactly. But here's what people miss. That word no isn't talking about not knowing out of ignorance. It's talking about a declarative knowing. What? I'll give you an example. 1 Corinthians 2, Paul writes to the church in Corinth and says, When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come as someone superior in speaking ability or wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay. So do you think Paul was saying he didn't know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified? Well, no. No, saying he determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified means he decided to declare or make known only Jesus. Right. So that's a clear example of how no is also used. Hmm. So this argument relies on the notion that the verb here, either, has a declarative lexical sense. In other words, the verb alone can by itself mean declare. So when we look in New Testament Greek lexicons, we should see that it has this sense of declaring. But there is no such lexical sense found in any lexicon. This is the entry from what is traditionally known as BDAG, which is a Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament, widely considered the most authoritative lexicon of the New Testament. Although it is not without its issues, there is not really an issue to identify in my use of this entry here. Now this is a little hard to read, but the main senses that we have here are to have information about to know, be intimately acquainted with, or stand in a close relation to, to know, to know slash understand how, can, be able, to grasp the meaning of something, understand, recognize, come to know, experience, to remember, recollect, recall, be aware of, to recognize merit, respect, to honor. So there's no such thing as a declarative sense of the verb ida, the verb to know. So what's going on in 1 Corinthians 2, 2? Well, we have to look at the whole sentence because Paul is not using this verb in some special way. Paul is just using flowery prose. I determined that I would know nothing other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so altogether, the rhetorical force of that whole sentence is, I'm going to act like I know nothing else. Therefore, my preaching will be focused on nothing else. It's the entire context, the entire sentence that contributes cumulatively to this conclusion that he's only going to declare Jesus Christ and him crucified. So all those constituent elements of that sentence that come together to indicate he's only going to declare Jesus Christ are entirely absent from our passages in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13. So the notion that we can point to 1 Corinthians 2.2 2 and say there's a declarative sense of the verb ida and so Jesus' use of the verb ida in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 therefore meaning that Jesus is not going to declare those things is just profoundly misguided. That There's no truth to that whatsoever. This is a bad apologetic argument and it builds on the need to try to find some way to deny the very clear and plain meaning of the text which is that Jesus did not know, only the Father knew. Now, we don't need to seek any kind of rationalization, reconciliation, harmonization, unless we're bringing to the text the assumption that Jesus must have all the knowledge that God the Father had. That idea 
did not develop till well after. And any assertion that the New Testament must be read in such a way as to support that is going to be a tortured bit of eisegesis that is the result of imposing that post-biblical assumption on the text. Now let's get some more context. We can go to Acts chapter 1 verse 6 when they gather around him and ask him the same question. They say, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Okay, in Matthew they ask the day and hour, but yeah, this is the same context of the question. Right, and Jesus says to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Notice he doesn't say it is not for us to know, but for you to know. Hmm. So in Matthew 24, Jesus isn't saying he doesn't know because of ignorance. He's saying it's not for him or the angels to declare or make known the day or hour. So Acts is a different text written by a different author in a different time period. And the notion that we can take the text of Acts to govern how we interpret Matthew 24 or even Mark 13 is imposing that assumption of univocality, the notion that the text must be understood to speak with one single consistent and unified voice or from a single consistent and unified perspective. That is nowhere stated in the Bible and even if it were, it would not be authoritative because one has to presuppose it in order for any single text to have authority over the whole text. And that, again, is a post-biblical dogma.